Okay, uh, first of all, I want to thank you. Good morning from uh, Vancouver. And uh, I want to thank Angela, Monica, and the Miles for just one moment. Just one moment. Uh, for organizing such a wonderful workshop and uh, in this uh, difficult time. And uh, I wish everyone healthy and uh, stay safe. And uh, it's good to uh, unite uh, all the PD uh, uh, people in this uh, one world <laughs> PD. And uh, I appreciate your effort. Okay, for, uh, let me start. Uh, so my talk today is on uh, GP. KP and uh, Adana Moser. And this is a joint work with Yong Liu from uh, uh, China. All right. So my talk has only one equation. Uh, and this equation is the traveling wave solution for gross uh, Petoskey. And so, so in this equation, the right hand side is the, 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 the usual Gensman Landau equation. And left hand side, you have this convection term, which is I, C, and the dx u, which is the traveling wave in the x direction. So this is the equation I'm going to uh, study today. Okay, and this equation looks like looks very simple, but it has a lot of rich structures, as we're going to say later, and it connects a lot of names. Okay. And another motivation for, for my uh, research in this uh, traveling wave is, uh, is a so-called uh, uh, shoot fluid passing the obstacle. So if you look at the GP equation with the obstacle, okay? And if we do this uh, so-called Mandelin uh, transform, and this become a compressible oiler and uh, with some pressure terms here, and so if you look at the steady state in the limit of uh, as the viscosity goes to zero, and you're going to see the so-called irrotational flow in for the Werner equation. And this is a, a classical problem has, which has been studied by a lot of uh, uh, people, by Rob uh, Fenn and the Gay Bach and so on. And so, the solution to this, uh, so conversely, if you have a solution to the irritation flow, you can find a steady state, okay, to, to the uh, uh, GP equation with the obstacle. Now, uh, so this steady state is, uh, is a vortexness because it has no vortex, okay? And so you might, and this is done in my paper with uh, Huang Huanin and published last year. Now, if, if we look for vortex solution, okay, and, and this has been observed in the physics literature, and they found that the vortex or uh, emit or emanate from the boundary, okay? And so if we look for this type of solution, and what we found is this is called vortex nucleation, and what we found that the NIPT equation is a sort of traveling wave and the GP, okay? And so under some non-degeneracy condition for this traveling wave for GP, and we also can construct a vortex solutions. So this is another motivation to study the traveling wave solution for the uh, GP. Okay, so this is the equation I'm going to study today. And so let me just uh, recast again. So the right hand side is the Gensum Landau equation, and left hand side is the transport, okay, is the transport term. Uh, the most important quantity here, you see everything is fixed except the speed. Now the speed is between zero and the square root of two, and the square root of two is called a sound speed. And so what is the connection with all these names, okay? 
So as C goes to zero on the left hand, if C goes to the, on the left hand limit, and this is related to the so called Gensel Landau and Eitner Mozart polynomial. And if C goes to square root two to the right hand side, and this is related so called KP1 equation. So, so we have a GP equation and which is related to uh, which is the Eitner Mozart polynomial and the KP and the traveling wave for KP. All right. So, and so uh, now uh, physically, this problem, this uh, the, the study of this equation, okay, this traveling wave equation, uh, is called Jones Robert program in the 1970s. And Jones Robert started this equation in the their physics. And, and they conjecture that there are, there are traveling wave solutions for each speed c uh, in zero and the square root two. Okay, but this is a conjecture. So this is called a Jones Robert program. And, and why we have this square root two? Because if uh, uh, c greater equal to square root two, and the uh, graph in 2003, Proof that there are no finite energy traveling wave solutions. Okay, so if we want to find a finite energy solution, our C must be below the uh, 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 the sound speed. All right. Okay. So this is called the Jans Rob Robert's program. Uh, so uh, for unique people, okay, and the okay, the first thing they do is by is to look at for using a uh, variational method. So there's a functional, well-defined functional uh, for this problem, which is the usual kinds of lambda functional, and this is the momentum. So, so formally, the travel wave solution can be considered as a critical point of the Gens of lambda equation and a constraint. The constraint is the momentum is fixed, okay? So, and in two papers by Bethieu, uh, Grafajad, and Sartre, and they proved the existence of this energy solution for C small, okay, uh, in dimension two. And Maris in uh, 2013 proved the full existence of a traveling wave, but for with, when C is between zero and square two in dimension three, but not in dimension two. And very recently, uh, 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 Bernardini and Reese in 2019 in a, in a preprint, and they proved the existence of travel wave solution for almost all C between zero and square two. So the problem is still not still completely open in dimension two for all C. And uh, and. So in, in, this, in this paper, they use a uh, Stewart's Montanis trick, and then they prove some compactness argument. And so they prove almost all, uh, 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 they prove the existence for almost all C, okay. Right. So this is the status of the Jones robbers program. So what I'm going to discuss today is not, what I'm also going to discuss these energy solutions but I'm not going to restrict to these energy solutions. I want to understand the full solution structure to this uh, solution, to this equation. So the first question we want to answer is, are there higher energy solutions? Okay, so the solutions uh, obtained by this minimization, this is uh, this energy solution. So uh, recently, uh, by numerical computation of uh, Chi Hong and uh, Shiat, and they prove multiple branch of uh, traveling wave solutions for the GP equation. Uh, and they provided uh, evidence of abundance of high energy solutions. And, and uh, they also see some kind of solution structure with the different most index. And our first aim is to construct these high energy solutions and where they are and how, how they look like. So my talk will divide into two parts. The first part, I'm gonna consider 
small speed case. Okay, so I take when C is small, okay, close to the uh, uh, first, close to the uh, to the left hand side, okay, when C is small. So now, so if C is small, I then I take C equal to epsilon, okay. So if epsilon equals zero, we know that this is the Gens of Lambda equation. This is the well known Gens of Lambda equation which has been studied extensively in the 90s. And we know there are two really symmetric solutions like uh, degree one and degree minus one water solutions. So uh, in, in, uh, in 2010, with a paper with Nin, we proved the existence of a traveling with solutions with two opposite uh, vortex. So we have uh, solutions with with traveling vortex on left hand side and right hand side and with a different sign, okay. And this solution is I, the the this and this solution, okay, traveling wave solution. Okay, so this is like a two vortex solution and with one uh, positive or one one negative. And where the question we want to study first today is what about multiple vortexes, okay? So let's first derive what should be the equation for this uh, multiple vortices. So formally, you see there are two kinds of uh, uh, effects in this equation. One is the attraction, the vortex and the positive vortex and negative vortex, they have uh, attractive uh, 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 force, which is like a wonderful, it should be a wonderful Epsilon. And then this, Lorentz force, which is given by by this uh, by this uh, convection term, and this gives you a, a Lorentz force, and so this two force should balance, and you get the the you get the the the, uh, the strength of the uh, forces. So the question is: Are there multiple uh, traveling vortex solutions? If they are, and where they are located? And this is the first result, uh, which will answer this question. So uh, with Yong Liu uh, last year, we proved that the following result. So you fix any polynomial degree, fix any integer n less than 34. Okay, I will explain why we get 34. Uh, and the result says, for epsilon small, there is uh, a solution U, okay, to the traveling wave uh, GP equation, which look like a multiple of, okay, uh, positive vortex times a multiple of negative vortex. And the degree, okay, the number of positive vortex is N times N plus two over two the number of electric vortex is n times n plus one over two as well. And what about, so the most important thing, what about the location of these, okay, vortices? It turns out the location of these vortexes are rules of the Adana Moser polynomial. And we have this symmetry, which is the, which is the negative vortex is negative of the location of the negative force is the negative of uh, the positive force. Okay, so this is the theorem I'm going to stay, I'm going to uh, prove to, uh, first uh, today. Let's look at some pictures. So if A equals one, and this is a two vortex, okay, this is the least and least solution. So when this start with A equals two, A equals two, we should have six vortices. And so the positive one, this part three uh, positive, these are the positive vortices and the negative, and this is three negative vortices. And you can compute this, the, the location of this vortex precisely. You can find what is the degree and you can find everything about the location because these are the rules of the item of most of the problem. Okay. And the, the condition that n less than 34 is really is a technical condition. Uh, 
the result is true for any degree as long as the Adler Moser polynomial has only simple root. Okay. And unfortunately, we can only uh, verify uh, for n less than 34 that this Adler Moser has only uh, simple roots. Okay. Our conjecture is this should have simple roots for any uh, in any degree. Any degree. Okay, so so let me now let me explain to you why um, we say Eitner Moser polynomial. Okay, uh, and uh, 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 in in this PD equation because Eitner Moser polynomial is uh, sort of like algebraic equation and is uh, related to the integral system. Okay, uh, so formally, uh, so let me write this is the equation. And let me put uh, uh, this uh, the pro this uh, answers okay this uh, uh, simple answers to the equation and we try to uh, compute the error okay and so you compute the error and then uh, at each point okay uh, uh, the vortex and you okay this error will solve some balance condition okay. And you compute this balance condition using the uh, compass survival. And this is what you get. And then this is this convection term, the Lorentz force gives you uh, like a uniform uh, force in one direction. Okay? So in the end, what you get is the that the we scaled the locations, okay, uh, the positive vortex and the negative vortex. And this should satisfy this system of equations. Okay. Uh, so this is a system of equations. Now, uh, for this system of equations, if if the mu, if the right hand side, which is the central force, no Lorentz force, uh, if it's not equal to zero, then necessarily you can show that the number of positive vortex must equal to the number of negative vortex. Okay. Now, if mu equals zero, this corresponds to a stationary vortex uh, uh, configuration. Now, the question is, how do you find uh, these points? How do you find the points which satisfy this uh, uh, algebraic equation? Okay. Now, this algebraic equation also arises in uh, in uh, uh, another context. Is called the case of Ruth uh, Hamiltonian, and so this uh, the locations okay, this P and Q, they are so called tri translate translating vortices for the case of Ruth Hamiltonian. So case of Ruth Hamiltonian is using the compass variable is D Z I and D T equals summation of uh, uh, gamma k, and this is the so-called circulation and over ck minus ci. So in our situation here, the circulation is either plus one or minus one. Okay? And this kitchen uh, of rules Hamiltonia arises in the so-called dynamics of vortices uh, in the oil flow and the uh, incompressible oil flow. And and uh, uh, so uh, in a recent paper with uh, Juan and, um, and uh, Monica and uh, Manel, which prove that uh, uh, this uh, dynamic correspondence of the kitchen of rules Hamiltonian uh, uh, system and to the oil. So, so in other words, if you have a solution to this uh, kitchen of rules Hamiltonian in a finite interval, you can construct a solution to the Euler flow, which with vortex is almost uh, uh, follows the trajectory of the Kirchhoff rules uh, Hamilton. So, but what I'm discussing today is the translating vortices. So these are vortices that translate in time. Okay? And so then the equation is this uh, algebraic equation. Okay. So this is the algebra equation uh, uh, we need to study, and we need to find out what are the locations, okay? And, and, and uh, in the 1964, okay, uh, 
uh, Tikachinko and uh, found a very surprising uh, uh, relation, okay? And so if we use this uh, positive polynomial, a positive location, you form this polynomial and the negative vortex uh, form this polynomial. And then uh, it turns out that this uh, P and Q certify this equation if or only if they certify the so-called Tikuchinko equation. And this is the second order polynomial equation. So, and, and this is a great discovery. And, uh, and, and then uh, Eitan Moser in the 70s, uh, okay, okay, in, in another context, okay, uh, they found some polynomials, okay? And they called the Eitan Moser polynomials. And then in 1983, Bartman found that Eitan Moser polynomial actually solves the Tikuchinko equation, okay? And, and but, okay, but Eitan Moser polynomial are the, not the only uh, 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 polynomials which satisfy this equation. There are many other polynomials which are solution to this equation and we'll discuss this uh, later. Okay. okay, so what is Eitan Moser polynomial? So uh, Eitan Moser polynomial are generated by this uh, uh, exponential function. So you take this exponential function and you uh, you do expansion in lambda, okay, and the coefficients are Eitan Moser polynomials, okay. Uh, now in in this uh, in this uh, in the left hand side you have a parameter k, and for each k you have uh, you have this Eitan Moser polynomial. Okay, okay. and so Eitan Moser polynomial is uh, uh, okay. So is is the uh, one is uh, is given by this uh, uh, by this uh, by this relation, which is the Ronskin. Uh, you take this Ronskin and uh, uh, you multiply this by some constant, so that the leading coefficient equal one. So this is the Eitan Moser polynomial. So and you can compute this Eitan Moser polynomial, for example. Uh, degree one is nothing but z, degree two is z cubed plus uh, some constant, and degree three is some degree, uh, and uh, n equals three, this is degree six. And the modified Eitan Moser polynomial is, uh, is this one. Okay. And, and, and uh, what we do, uh, we just take mu equal one, and we take a special uh, pr uh, parameter k zero, which is Minus half and one one one, and 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 then uh, we have this polynomial a n and the b n, and and these are the polynomials with uh, uh, real coefficients, and we can show that the rules of these two polynomials, this a n, gave the location of positive vortex, and b n gave the location of the negative vortex, and they solve the exactly uh, this uh, this equation, okay? This uh, algebraic equation. So, and and let's notice that these are the symmetric ones, okay? These are symmetric uh, and uh, symmetric uh, 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 translating uh, what has solution, okay? Configuration. So let me look at some pictures. So for example, this is uh, uh, when a equals eight, okay? And this is the root of a eight, and and this is the root of uh, b eight. Okay. So if we put this together, and uh, and uh, and uh, this and this will be the the location, or this will be the 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 traveling vortex solution location we're going to construct later. The, this is a twelve case, and uh, b twelve, yeah, a twelve and b twelve. And the twenty-five, okay, and uh, okay, and when n when the degree get bigger and bigger, you see they are almost like in a circle, but not exactly in a circle. Okay, so uh, we 
we consider this uh, uh, at, at each location, we consider this at the fourth map from PQ to this fourth map. And, and so, so, and we have A and B, they are the rules of A and B. And, okay, and this formally, these are the locations of positive vertex and the negative vertex. Okay. Well, this is a formal computation, right? We will want to make it rigorous. Now, to make the construction rigorous, we need to show that these locations are somehow non-degenerate. In other words, if you perturb this location, this kind of structure still persists. And, and this is what we need to show. We need some kind of non-degeneracy. In other words, we need to show that the linearization of the map at this point has no non-trivial symmetric kernel. So how to prove uh, the non-degeneracy, okay? Now, once we can prove this non-degeneracy, then the rest of the argument will be just purely PD argument, just a perturbation argument. And uh, I think many of you may be familiar with this near proof reduction. So I will not do that. I just want to show you how we can prove this non-degeneracy, okay? This is the main, uh, the, the main point of uh, this paper. All right, so the main claim we're going to prove is if the item modes polynomial has only simple rules, if the all the rules are simple, then long degeneracy hold, okay? And, and this is the main result in the paper. So how do we prove uh, this uh, 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 claim? So we prove this claim by the, in the integral, integral system method, okay? So, uh, we have this uh, recursive relation for this uh, uh, atom of polynomial, okay? And uh, if you take a phi n, which is the ratio of a n plus one over a n, and plus n is some modified, okay, b n over a n. And uh, there's a so-called double transform between plus n and plus n plus one, and and A and B and also certify this uh, uh, Tikuchinko equation. So this is all the relation we have, okay? And all these relations are non-degenerate, are, are, are non-linear, sorry, non-linear, okay? So to prove non-degeneracy, what we do is we want to find all the linearized, okay, version of this uh, recurrence relations, okay? So, for example, the linearized recursion, uh, uh, the first uh, recursive relation, and using the linearized recursive relation, and we can find some, okay, uh, okay, some recursive relation like this Fn. And so we can then solve this Fn uh, uh, recursively, okay? Once found Fn, we get Fn plus one. And for the double transform, we also do linearization. Okay? We do a linearization of a double transform. And for the Tikuchinko equation, we also do linearization. And then we found that you can all use the recursive relation to reduce everything to the initial condition. The initial condition will be, as, will be just a first order equation. And then uh, using I, if you analyze, because these this are complex viable equations, you analyze the singularities of these uh, uh, polynomials, okay? And turns out that if the rules are simple, then the initial condition is zero. Sigma zero equals uh, F zero equals zero. And so as a result, then we can use the recursive relation, we can show all this Fn and equals zero, and then the Force map is uh, uh, non-degenerate. So this is the proof. Of course, this is a very short proof, and uh, and this proof is uh, you know take pages to do. But the rest of the uh, there's also a perturbation part which I did not talk about because uh, the time constraint. So this is the this is the first part of my talk, and so I consider the the uh, the a GP equal traveling GP equation with C close to zero. 
Now let me go to the second part, which is called the transonic limit. So uh, as c goes to square root two, okay? Now, when c goes to square root two, uh, uh, Bethu, Grafajad, and Sart in 2008, and they prove a very interesting uh, 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 reduction. And they show that, okay, if you take uh, c, uh, we know c is close to the square two, that red c like a two minus uh, h square, and the eighth h is one minus u c square. Then understand the energy bound of the traveling wave, and and they prove that. So you see the rescaling here is anisotropic. They prove uh, that this rescaled uh, equation uh, approaches to traveling wave solution for the KP one. So so in the other end of the of the of the speed, and you see the traveling wave. Uh, solution for the KP1. So what is the KP1? So KP1 is, uh, this is the KP1 equation, and uh, this is dTU plus dx cube u and plus three dx and the u square minus dx minus one and dy square u. You see that this is an isotropic, and this KP equation is an integral for equation has a Luxfer inverse skeleton backline transform, and you can use the Herato's uh, direct method and the double transformation. The explicit Sontos uh, uh, solutions, as we're going to see later, and and uh, there's a lot of study on this uh, inverse skeleton for KP1. Uh, so today I'm going to in, I'm interested in the so-called traveling wave for KP1. For traveling wave, and this this is the, the equation for KP1. This is the equation. So you see that this equation here uh, in the X fiber and the Y fiber they are different because they in the X fiber you're taking fourth order derivative, in the Y fiber you're taking second order derivative. So in 1977, uh, um, uh, Manakov and uh, in 1979, uh, Abano ways. And they found a very uh, explicit formula. There's a so-called lump solution. So, so this is a traveling wave solution, which decays like one of our score, okay, and which is sort of anisotropic, okay, non-radial, okay, and this is uh, and and it's uh, it's a sign change. So this is a picture of this. Uh, Number solution. You see that uh, is first is non-radial, and secondly is is uh, non-positive. Okay, and but still, and is is decay and is algebraic decay. So so this is a solution which is different from all the solutions we have been using. You know to construct solution like a solid, like 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 this ground state or this. And this is completely different because this non-radial, non-positive, and the algebraic decay. Okay. And you can look at what is the the x slide and uh, and uh, the y slide, uh, and you see this uh, 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 this lump type. Okay. So, uh, what a open question for this lump lump uh, solution? First, uh, is this uh, Number solution non-degenerate, okay, and 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 the reason is this is the first thing because we want to do the reverse construction. If it's non-degenerate, then we may try to construct a solution uh, 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 to the GP equation. As we have to say later, this is possible. The second equation, second question: What about the most index of this number solution? Okay. In the numerical computation of Chi Hong and in 2017, the numerically they computed that, that this is the most index one. Okay. And and the third question is is Q is this is a orbital stable because this is a sort of like a parabolic equation. Right? 
Okay, and there's a generalized KP1 equation, okay, and, and, and this has a number solution, uh, also has a number solution, so-called ground state, and uh, 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 in the bar and the thought in 1997, they constructed a number solution to this problem for P less than five by variational methods, okay? So you have energy functional, you solve this problem in some uh, the hardware manifold. And then this uh, ground state, okay, solution is orbital stable when P is uh, between one and seven over three, and is unstable uh, uh, for P between seven over three and uh, five. But uh, the KP equation, <coughs> original KP equation is P equals two. <coughs> so for P equals two, it's not known whether or not this uh, standard number solution could, is <coughs> the explicit number solution, right? This, this number solution. So <coughs> it's unclear whether or not this number solution is the ground state. You can construct ground state, okay, uh, by variation method. But whether or not this ground state is the number solution, this is unclear. This is open. So this is a false open question. Is the number solution, is the ground state? And, and for PICOS2, there are also higher energy solutions, and, and they are related to so-called Kanagari Moser system. And the stability issue for this equation are more uh, Complicated. For example, this is a two number solution. Uh, this is the two number solution. Uh, uh, numerical picture for the two number solution, and this are the three number solution. Okay. So let me answer the first question. Uh, and uh, <coughs> and in the first question, we, in the first theorem, we prove uh, uh, we we prove that the number solution is non-degenerate, as you expect, okay? So if you consider the linearized uh, KP1 equation around the lump, then, and assume some kind of decay condition, then the only kernel you have is translation modes, okay? So this is uh, the non-degeneracy, okay? Uh, the next is, uh, what about the most index? of uh, this number solution, okay? Uh, so how do we start the most index of this number solution? As I said before, this number solution is an isotropic, is non-positive, and uh, is algebraic decay. And how do we start the most index of such a solution, okay? And in, for seven years, we have, we have been able to study the most index for video solutions, for example, okay, use many, many methods. But for this, this, this problem here is, uh, is non-video, non-positive, and the uh, algebraic decay. It has all the disadvantages you can find, okay? So how do we study the most index of such solution? It turns out that we're going to use a continuity argument, okay, to study the most index. Okay, uh, so even so, for this trans, uh, translating uh, for this transfer wave for KP one equation, we have the so-called one-dimensional soliton uh, solution. Okay, so this is one-dimensional solution which is uh, independent of the y. So this is just u double plus minus u plus uh, three u square, and and this has the spike. Okay, it's a one-dimension spike solution. Uh, is a front solution, and this is a number solution, which is decay in both variables. Okay, and then there's a connection from the one-dimension solution to the two-dimension solution. Okay, there's a continuous family of solutions, and 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 fortunately for this problem, you can write down this continuous family of solutions. Okay. And this is the formula, okay? You can write down, uh, so you, if you take a two prime, the k square plus b square, and the k square plus b square equal one. And, and, and this is the gamma k, which is 
sort of like a polynomial in cosine hyperbolic, and QK is a two dx square log gamma K. So then as K goes to zero, uh, this goes to the, the number solution, okay? And which decays in two phi in both directions. Now as K goes to one half, and this goes, gave this uh, approach to the one dimensional uh, front solution. And so this solution is periodic in the y variable. And as, as, it go, as k goes to uh, zero, it, it approaches the number solution. As k goes to a half, it approaches to the front solution. So this is a connection between one dimension solution and the two dimension solution. Okay? And we have seen this phenomena in the semilinear problem, which is the famous, uh, the so-called dancer solution, right? Uh, so uh, uh, this is Laplace minus Laplace equals UP minus U. For this equation, you also have a one dimension solution and a two dimension spike. And you will also find uh, a family of solution which connecting this, okay? Which is given by the period, right? And, but unfortunately, you, can, you don't know the uniqueness of this solution. You cannot say this is a continuous family. But for this, uh, uh, for this uh, uh, KP equation, you can write on the solution explicitly. So this is our second result uh, on the long degeneracy of uh, 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 solutions. And uh, in this result, we can show not only the number solution is non degenerate, but also all this family of solution, okay? Each family, the one dimension solution to the two dimension solution, or under the periodical solution, uh, uh, is also non degenerate, okay? And we, we of course, assume that it's a periodic, the periodic, uh, the period does not change. Now, why do we want to do this? Because we want to prove the most index of the number solution. And, and it turns out that we know the most index of the one dimension solution. This is very easy to do, okay, because it's one dimension. And so we want to use the information for the most index of one dimension solution and to derive the information for the most index for the mo multiple, uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, for the number solution. And this is our result. So, so as an application of uh, this uh, non digital argument, we can show that now we can answer the, the most index question. We can show that this most index operator, near rights operation operator has exactly one negative eigenvalue. And as a consequence, the number solution is uh, orbital stable. And so how to prove the most index result? We use uh, a continuation argument. We start from the, uh, we start from the, the one dimension solution for which we know is most index, okay? And then we continue along the branch. And we show that the most index is environment in this branch because it's the continuous environment. So, and, 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 and okay, unless you, if you have a 10, uh, then this means you have, you have a degeneracy. But then we show that all, in all among all this solution, the family solution, the solution is non-degenerate. So we have the most index in this branch of solution, in this family solution, most index equal to two, equal one. And, and to prove the orbital stable, you know, you, you compute the number solution, you compute the, uh, the, this uh, quantity, and you show this quantity is convex, and then this is uh, by the uh, Grenard case and the Chattard and the Strauss you know, theorem, and this is uh, orbital state. Okay. So now we can uh, apply our long digits. Okay, so let me just recall what we did in part two. So we take C go to uh, square root two for this equation, and we get the KP1, travel wave for KP1, and we prove a lot of uh, properties for the travel wave for the KP1. For example, 
We prove there is a non-degenerate, we put the MOS index and so on. Now using this information, now we can, uh, uh, we can now go back to the GP equation. Okay, so this is a recent result. And, uh, uh, and Okay, and, and uh, uh, then uh, for C close to square root two, okay, the sound speed, uh, you can construct a traveling wave solution for the GP and, uh, 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 and, uh, and with, uh, with this uh, profile, okay? Uh, with, uh, with this, which, which look like a uh, uh, scaled uh, number solution. Okay, all right, so my time is always up. So let me, uh, uh, and now we can also, uh, very recently, we can now classify all number solutions, okay? And this is a very recent result, which is uh, exciting. And uh, uh, as for all decay solutions, and we can show that all the number solutions are, are this type. And then as a result, now the single number solution is the unique ground state. Now we can say that the ground, the, the number solution is the ground state. Okay. Uh, for the proof of non degenerate systems, my time is up, so I will just uh, show. Okay, this is a non proof. Uh, uh, finally, let me just uh, summary, give okay, you a summary and the, some uh, open questions. Okay. Uh, uh, so, in summary, uh, what we prove, uh, what I today and uh, in my talk is considered the two end solution. Two ends when C equals zero, we have multi-vortex solution which are rules of atom and Mozart polynomial and locations of the uh, uh, vortex. And for K equals to square root two, we found motor bump solutions to the KP1 solution. And, and so we now have construction of solutions on both ends, C close to zero, C close to square two. So the first open question is uh, the non degeneracy of uh, motor number solutions for KP1. And, and as a result, the second question is a motor number solution for the traveling wave for when C close to square root two. And, uh, okay, and, okay, uh, open question three is, are these two branches connected? Okay, and, and, and of course, the most important question is the existence of a traveling waves for all speed, for C between zero and the square root two, and this is a completely open, and uh, uh, I think uh, this is a very important question that this call, this will finish the Jones Roberts program. And, and since we are doing many, you need people on the fire fire rational methods. And, and this will be a very good problem for people working on fire rational methods. And this is, with this property, we need new fire rational methods for this high energy solutions and to find the solutions for the full speed, for all speed. Okay, and this is uh, uh, my talk and uh, I finish on time, okay. And um, thank you.